Women's lacrosse is on the hot streak as they prepare for their first A-10 matchups of the season. Hello, I'm Jake Smolinski. And I'm Brendan Rigney. Baseball competes in a slew of games with some mixed results. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sportsline. Welcome to Sportsline. We've got a packed week of coverage for LaSalle Sports as the teams start their A-10 play. But let's be real, who cares about the recaps? We are only here for the upcoming picks of the week. And we'll also hear from Sarah Pino on a big women's lacrosse game coming up on this week's marquee matchup. But first, let's take a look at what went down this past week for our athletes. Men's track kicked off their outdoor season by competing at the Philly Classic at UPenn on March 19th. Sophomore Justin Gare won the 100 meter for the Explorers, clocking in with a time of 10.87 seconds. The blue and gold also made a solid showing in the 1500 meter, with seven Explorers finishing in the top 10, including Bradley Hur, who finished in second. LaSalle returned to the track on March 25th at the Stony Brook University quad meet. Top, explorers for, top finishers for the Explorers include sophomore Kenneth Worthington, who won the long jump, and freshman Zakia Williams, who won the triple jump. The women's track and field team also opened their outdoor season at the Philly Classic. Sophomore Morgan Zeckley broke the LaSalle record in the 3,000 meter race, crossing the finish line in just over nine and a half minutes for a third place finish. Fellow sophomore Amber Jenkins snagged an impressive first place victory for the Explorers in the 400 meter dash, pulling in at 59.88 seconds. In the 100 meter, freshman Ariel Mitchell placed second in the competitive field of 25 runners in 12.64 seconds, just 0.25 seconds behind the victor. Men's and women's tennis took a strong loyal team last Friday, March 25th, and struggled. We'll start again with the women. Uh, in doubles, sophomore team Jayla Smith and Ali Santorelli played the first match, losing with a final score of 6-1. They were followed by Katherine Thomas and Asha Wenzel in the second match with Ashley Anderson and Cecil Johnson in the third. Both pairs lost with scores of 6-0 and 6-1. Women continued to face troubles in singles as well, each athlete going down in two games. Final score for the women was Loyola 7, LaSalle 0. For the men, doubles left a lot to be desired as well, with each team losing by a score of 6-1. In singles, junior Mark Robinson lost a hard-fought battle, falling 7-5 in the last set of his match. Final score for the men, Loyola 7, LaSalle 0. The baseball team took a 4-3 win over Canisius on March 18th. Joey Ravert pitched six innings and came up big in the fifth when he launched a two-run homer into the seats. In a doubleheader against St. Peter's, the men split the series, beginning with a 7-3 loss. In Game 2, Jordan Meyer was a beast on the mound, giving up only a pair of hits and striking out six in the seventh inning. LaSalle topped LaSalle topped St. Peter's 1-0 off the bat of Travis George, but even a bright spot can be tarnished. The men suffered four devastating losses hereafter, first on March 22nd with a 22-1 Udell Monster defeat. The men again were swept in a three-game series against St. John's after that. Explorer Baseball rallied against Delaware State. The bullpen was on fire, catalyzed by Ethan Springston. The redshirt junior, junior hit a bomb and came up with a two-out, two-run homer to give LaSalle a much-needed 6-5 victory. On March 29th, the baseball team headed to Lawrenceville, New Jersey to take on Ryder. Right-handed starter Mike Anthony had a rough game, giving up three runs in the second inning. The Explorer would give up six hits and a pair of walks, which allowed four runs to score in just five innings. And Kevin McGowan was able to get LaSalle on the board in the third when he worked a two-out walk and then scored on a grounder from Joey Rabbit. The Explorers looked like they were going to come back in the ninth when Ethan Springston came up with a triple, but they fell 5-2. Baseball now has a 7-18 and 18 record this year. Softball was seeing double after a pair of games at the UMBC Spring Classic on March 18th weekend. In both Sacred Heart games, the women beat the Pioneers 6-4 off the bats of Christina Bascara, Michelle Haggerty, and Mackenzie Obert. In a double header against Penn, LaSalle was turned away 2-5, but retaliated in Game 2 for a 5-3 victory, thanks to Michelle Haggerty Homer in the fifth. In LaSalle's first conference series against George Washington the following weekend, the Colonials took the first game 
The Explorers put up a fight in the first of a doubleheader that Saturday as the Colonials allowed three runs in the third. Freshman Emma Schwiegert, excuse me, added a run of her own off the bat of Erica Reese, but LaSalle was unable to produce wins as the series concluded with a third loss, 3-6. LaSalle now stands at 7-12 on the season. March 26th marked another day on the water for LaSalle crew as both the teams competed in the 34th annual Murphy Cup on the Schuylkill. The men's varsity eight finished fourth in the third heat. Senior Jack Shaw and company crossed the finish line with a time of six minutes and 23 seconds, qualifying for the petite finals later that day. Highlighting women's efforts, the varsity four boat placed second in its heat at seven minutes and 48 seconds. Coxed by senior Caitlin Reyes, the Explorer boat was 10th of the 30 boats overall of the varsity four races. After taking a two-week hiatus, the men's golf team stayed local for a two-day tourney at Villanova. On the first day of the Wildcat Invitational, the Explorers were tied for second place. But let it be known that the second, that that the second through tenth teams at the time were all only separated by just five strokes. After the second day out on the green, LaSalle finished fourth overall out of 23 teams and tying with Villanova and Binghamton. As a whole, the team shot a 303 and 19 over par. Junior P.J. Asierno placed third overall, shooting a 146 and four over total. Moving on to women's lacrosse, the team seem to be building momentum as they prepare for their first A-10 matchup of the season. Starting on Friday, March 18th, the Explorers lost a heartbreaking 11-10 game to Sacred Heart at Connecticut. Junior Ali Ilgenfritz led the Explorers with, a three, with three goals, but couldn't manage to tie up the game with 24 seconds remaining. Women's lacrosse then prepped for a game against Central Connecticut State on Sunday, March 20th. With LaSalle controlling midfield and goalie Lucy Laughlin making four saves for the match, Ilgen Fritz and Caitlin Fay had a field day scoring four goals apiece. The Explorers took the win 8-6 for their first W of the season. <laughs> Finally, lacrosse made their way back to McCarthy against LIU Brooklyn to continue their streak on March 26th. They started the game as a powerhouse, scoring three unanswered goals, a la Ilgen Fritz, Fay, and Brittany Edwards. From there, the Explorers took complete control of the game and came out with a 15-8 win, bringing their record to 2-5. Ilgen Fritz schnookered five goals on the game, while Faye stood back up with four. It looks like the synergy is finally starting to kick in for these team veterans. You know, Jake, speaking of lacrosse, that brings us to our weekly award. Uh, sophomore goalkeeper Lucy Laughlin was named A-10 Defender of the Week. In LaSalle's win over LIU Brooklyn, Laughlin tallied nine saves, tying her career high. Jake, six of those saves actually came in the second half, and that helped propel the Explorers as they pulled away after halftime. So, moving on now to exploring headlines. Uh, big news for LaSalle basketball. Explorer legend Lionel Simmons will be inducted into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame this November. The alum played from 86 to 90 as a small forward and sits at third all-time in the NCAA with over 3,200 points scored and a lot of stuff here, was also the 1990 National College Player of the Year, among other accolades. Simmons helped lead the Explorers to three consecutive NCAA tournament appearances and is the third blue and gold player to be inducted. Jake, he actually sits alongside of Tom Gola, um, another player whose name is escaping me, as well as another Explorer coach. Um, so this is pretty big news yeah. for, the, you know, for the university, I think. You know what? They're just uh, some really great guys. You know, LaSalle, we produce the greatest. Yeah, nice, the greatest. Just a bunch of nice guys. Yeah, you know, just a bunch of nice guys, guys here. <laughs> Moving on and exploring headlines. <laughs> despite, despite missing out again in the NCAA tournaments, LaSalle's current basketball teams can take some solace in individual awards for their players. For the women, sophomore Amy Griffin was named to the All-Philadelphia Big Five first team after she led the Big Five and A-10 in scoring with 17.7 points per game. For the men, and no surprise here, junior Jordan Price made the Big Five second team after another productive season on the court. Price led the Big Five in scoring with 19.2 points per game. And his teammate, Amar Stukes, also received a Big Five honor, this one for work in the classroom. The sophomore was given the top academic award after maintaining a 3.35 GPA. Jake, I gotta ask you, are you surprised at all that Jordan Price was named All Big Five? Honestly, not at all. I, I am blown away by how he was just consistently performing against every, game? every caliber team we could imagine. He was putting up the points when we needed it. And so I'm like really like we do this every time like i'm just excited for next year and uh, amy griffin not only getting uh first team big five but she also led the a10 and the big five in scoring yep. she was um, vicious oh vicious she was she was the best part about this team this year i think offensively yep. and then also amar stukes um 
following a little bit in the, the footsteps of his teammate Hank Davis, yeah, but getting exactly. another Big Five academic award. So, yeah. But oh. not to be outdone academically, swimmers Jakob Bartoszewicz and Fabian Bergman both earned the A-10's academic all-conference team honors. The Swede Bergman is an, is an ISBIT major with a GPA of 3.73 and reached the conference finals for the 100 and 200 yard backstroke events. Now our Polish friend uh, Bartoszewicz is an undecided major with a 3.7 GPA and also made the conference finals. Jake, how, how happy are you for, for Jakob? I know you guys are, well, are friends. You know, um, I just want to say is my, 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 my Polish counterpart, go Jakob. Go Jakob. I'm actually Polish too, by the way, so, you know, well, like a quarter, so it doesn't really yeah, count. Yeah, nice but. last name. Uh, anyway, you're going to love this, though. <laughs> yes, this one? This is a special is this, treat. This um, thank you, GoExplorers.com, for alerting me to this. Uh, former LaSalle soccer star, Kelsey Haycook, is actually preparing for uh, her first preseason away from LaSalle. She is currently in New Jersey for the Sky Blue FC. Um, as she was here, she was also, she's also playing forward there. Um, you know, I'm thinking, in a couple weeks, their first game is out in Seattle on the 17th of April. Uh, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm just saying tickets are available for you to purchase. I feel like that's a treat that you'd like to give to yourself, Jake. I, I think that uh, is definitely has potential. Are you saying, is that Sea Isle or Seattle? That is Seattle, as in oh, the, then the West Coast. Honestly, we'll just, we'll just tack it to the LaSalle that, TV fund. There you go, perfect. Thanks, Tanya. Gotta use the budget for something, right? Well, with that, we are at our first break of the show, but when we come back, we've got game previews and a marquee matchup, so please stay tuned. Trisha's having a sleepover tonight. Can I go? I wonder about Lucy's friends. What should I say? I know you're only 10, but one of these days a friend will offer you a drink. And alcohol at your age can lead to so many things. None of them good. So can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. I finished my homework. <laughs> Bigger promise. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom. I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? Sure. Really? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. of uh, LaSalle sports action this upcoming week, so let us highlight the games ahead. Track and field will spend a few days at the Colonial Relays in Virginia starting April 1st. The Explorers will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with athletes from all over, from all over uh, 40 other schools, including Conestoga and Oscar Smith. Men's and women's tennis will team up on the road as they travel to Duquesne on Friday, April 1st, Hofstra on Saturday, and return home to Philly on Wednesday, April 6th to face St. Joe's. And beginning Atlantic 10 play, baseball will take a swing at a three-game series against George Washington starting April 1st. After that, they'll play two non-conference games against UDL and Delaware State on Tuesday the 5th and for the second time uh, this season. Softball will host St. Louis in their second A-10 conference series starting Saturday, April 2nd. Then LaSalle will try their luck out at Lafayette on the 6th with a non-conference doubleheader. And men's and women's rowing will take on Washington College and Philadelphia University for what is predicted to be a rainy Saturday on the Schoolville. Men's golf tees up at the Silver Springs Country Club in Hellertown, PA, starting April 2nd. While the squad did not compete in the invite last year, in 2014, the men placed 5th out, out of 15, going 14 over par. Ooh. Women's lacrosse will also be taking on the Davidson Wildcats on April 1st before a VCU game on Sunday. Sarah Pino gives you all the info as Lax goes into A-10 play in this week's Marquee Matchup. Hello, I am Sarah Pino, and this is another edition of Marquee Matchup. 
Women's lacrosse travels to Richmond, Virginia to battle on the field with the VCU Rams on Sunday, April 3rd. The Explorers, led by head coach Candace Bossel, were off to a rough start after dropping their first five games, but came back to win their last two. Looking to carry that momentum forward, the Explorers hope to capture another win against a struggling VCU team, which hold an overall record of 2-6. and six. One of the key players to watch out for in this action-packed matchup will be junior Ali Ilgenfritz. In the Blue and Gold's victory against LIU Brooklyn, Brooklyn Ilgenfritz dominated the game with five goals and one assist. She plays a pivotal role on the team's success, leading the team this year in goals, points, and assists. Another key player to watch for on the Explorers is senior Caitlin Fay. Fay enters 2016 ranked 10th in program history with 99 career goals and 115 career points. Fay also aided in the victory over LIU Brooklyn, scoring four goals and one assist. Combined, these two players will surely bring their fuel to power the Explorers' offense in what looks to be a high-scoring matchup. But in order for the Explorers to win big against the VCU Rams, they will have to hone these two major key components. Gaining possession and control of the ball in lacrosse is paramount. The theory is that if you can control the draw, you should win the game. What looks like a coin flip or a random flip of the stick is a much more involved process with strategies and techniques to help the team gain possession. If blue and gold wins the draw, ultimate, ultimately they can control the game. From that point on, getting off to an early lead is an important factor to securing a victory in a lacrosse game. This component alone could crush the other team momentum. Blue and gold took advantage of this in their first two victories of the season and hasn't looked back since. Make sure to check in and see how the Explorers performed against VCU Rams on Sunday, April 3rd in Richmond, Virginia. That does it for Marquee Matchup. I'm Sarah Pino. Go Explorers! Thank you, Sarah. We've still got a lot more show for you as Jake Smolensky gives us his picks of the week, uh, the manifesto as he calls it, so please stick around. I'm just gonna hang out. It's a school night. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. Not sure about those two. I've been meaning to ask you. This is tougher than I thought. Is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. I hope not, because alcohol can lead you to say things and do things that you really wish you hadn't. Isn't this what you're supposed to say? I know. So if any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. Brian. Yeah? So start the conversation even before they're teenagers. Good idea. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. All right, it is now time for our very special segment, Picks of the Week, take it away. Okay, let's just, first of all, can we just comment really quick on how nice that intro was and how professional that, that felt? Very professional, Jake, it was oh, very, very professional. It's honestly just- Yeah, you know, it's just- It was professionally done. Yes, thank you. Um, anyway, uh, we have a very good segment of Picks of the Week coming up this week. So first, this is gonna be, bring me to my first pick. So can we uh, roll tape, please? All right, so for my first pick, I'm calling Softball versus St. Louis. Um, this is their, uh, one of their first, or actually, I think actually one of the first four, or this is gonna be their fourth, a-10 game of the season so far, and SLU is honestly one of their biggest rivals. Uh, talking to Allie Waddington about it, uh, this is one of the games they look forward to all season is taking them on, and then, you know, they're going straight up two games against them. Uh, what I'm calling for them is at least one win against it. Like, you know, uh, they have been, like, they're basically around, like, the same exact, like, level as mm -hmm. we have been most of the season, and what do you think, though, so far as, like, you know, softball's starting to heat up a little bit? 
Uh, I mean, they're, they're still um, trying to find their way because uh, it seems like every time they get into a streak of wins, they, they drop a couple games here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the same problem that plagued them last year. So I guess it's good to see that they haven't taken a step back from last yeah. year. Um, I, I don't think that it's necessarily anything to panic about just yet. I'm a little worried because St. Louis has a 10-17 record, and they have a trio of pretty decent hitters, yeah. all batting over, I think, um, a 3 0 So we'll see, yeah. we'll see how the, the pitching staff yeah. does against them. So. And I think, yeah, if we can get Mary-Kate Scott just, you know, rolling, um, even just getting to hear that, you know, she's on like, kind of like her victory lap. Yeah, absolutely. And she's considered one of the best pitchers in the A-10. And so, you know, if she can really start to just – Hit the stride. Yeah, we'll hit see the stride. So, see yeah. Tina Vascaro, so I'm uh, pretty excited. And this takes us into pick number two, a roll tape. All right, this one is baseball versus GW. And I'm going to say, you know, one win out of three. You know, GW is 8-17. and 17. LaSalle's running 7-8. and eight. And, you know, this is going to be uh, just a good start for A-10 play. This is actually the LaSalle men's team's first bit of A-10 play this season. And, you know, I think it kind of comes back right now to the fact that we – we're almost there in terms of getting on some hot streaks with our hitters. Absolutely. You know, Robert, Jared mm -hmm. Malone, freshman coming in. Um, we're getting some fresh faces that are actually performing, mm -hmm. which is really refreshing. But I want to make sure, you know, that, uh, that there just needs to be a bit more like of that streaky sort of nature. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I, I'm curious to think real quick what you think about uh, – uh, this, there's this player on GW, uh, Mark Osis. He's batting a 389. He doesn't have any home runs on the season, but he's the most consistent hitter on that team. Do you think, uh, how, what kind of role, do you or what kind of, is he going to be a monkey wrench for the, for the Explorers pitching staff, do you think? Uh, I'm going to say absolutely. You know, we have decent pitchers. You know, we have, we have a very, very wide range. You, you, you obviously got Robert coming in, you mm -hmm. got McGowan. Um, but I think that it's going to be the challenge. It's going to be trying to shut this guy down. Uh, I don't know what the best option is. Are we going to walk him every time? Like, <laughs> but at the same, like we got to figure out at least a strategy to deal with this team because we're we're playing three games against them, which is a blessing and a curse, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like every time we get into um, a series of some type that's more than a doubleheader, uh, we we don't really split the games. I feel like we either we win all of them or we lose all of them. I mean, yeah. it's just the both. Talking about softball and, and baseball, they're both very streaky teams. And it's just nice to see if, if they were – they're consistently streaky, but can they be yeah. consistently winning? That's, yes. that's the real question. <laughs> that's the real question. So I, I, I think we can at least win one of the games against – Yeah, you know, it's a tough know. game on the road. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. Once we settle in, mm -hmm. I, I think that there's definitely some potential. Absolutely. So, yeah. And so this goes on to pick number three. Please take it. And this, honestly, though, is probably my favorite – going to be my favorite – or my favorite, like just lacrosse games of the season, Lax versus VCU – uh lax right now is on a two game uh streak i i'm happy like you know you got elgin fritz and caitlin Fay. like elgin fritz here has been dominating in the past two games she scored nine goals in two games that's really nice and they all she also has caitlin Fay backing her up the entire time and i think what was missing in the beginning of the season is you know they're practicing out there on the mccarthy not the nicest field, no. to be completely honest. I mean, I think that has a lot to do with it, too, because they'll go, they'll go all on the road to other, these other places, and they're not used to playing on turfs of that nature. Exactly. It, sound, it sounds weird, but that's, I mean, that, that does play a factor. Well, Lucy Laughlin's coming off of yeah. Defender of the Week, um, but VCU has two. They have a pretty great striking duo. Um, their top two scorers both have 18 goals apiece, um, and then from there it's a pretty steady drop-off for scoring. Uh, do you think that these two, uh, one Molly Barsikowski and Sky Hyatt, um, do you think that they're going to have any success against Lucy, Lucy Laughlin, especially after she's coming off of a pretty significant win? I honestly think more in lacrosse. The goalie plays a big role, mm -hmm. but it's really more about the midfield. Right. Who's getting control? Mm -hmm. And especially when you have you know, somebody who's athletic as Ali Elgin Fritz, um, Caitlin Fay, Brittany Edwards, like these, these players, if we're able to do exactly what we did last game against uh, LIU with – going 15 to eight, you yeah, know, yeah. and really just controlling that midfield. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter who you have uh, coming down for them, you know, like just, it's, you know, so what, there's, there's, they're a duo, they're scoring some, like. I mean, you gotta also look at the fact that VCU's two and six. I mean, yes, so I, I yeah. don't know what kind of teams VCU's <laughs> been playing necessarily, um, but we're just about in the same boat for Explorers Lacrosse coming off of that mm -hmm. pretty uh, unsteady beginning of the season now, picking yeah. up two wins. So I, I think, I think synergy. Synergy think is the synergy. word. Synergy. Synergy is, is the word of the week this, yeah. this, on this edition of Sportsline. Yeah. Um, Jake, i got to ask you, yeah. uh, moving, on, moving on from, from picks of the week, uh, this is a serious question. Are yeah. you actually going out to Seattle to see Kelsey Haycook? Okay. Well, 
um, I would just, uh, I asked my mom to Venmo me some money. Um, so hopefully uh, what's gonna happen is uh, she's gonna send it to my phone. I'll be able to, uh, maybe I'll be able to um, you know, head out to Seattle. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to do chest painting, full body painting. Obviously. Um, and obviously, really just yes. show my support for Kelsey Haycook. Uh, Absolutely. But to be honest though, like I am genuinely excited to be potentially, you know, seeing her on some ESPN channel. Like, like how crazy is that? You know, um, I could definitely uh, be. I could, I could support. Actually, you know, what? I might as well just. Start I'll do it. Kelsey I'll come with you. Yeah. I mean, if I, you know, if I, you know, if I have nothing, <laughs> nothing going on. I mean, I, I, if I can afford, if I just spontaneously have money to go out to, to Seattle, I would love to do that yeah. as well. But also speaking of um, pros or former LaSalle alums that are now pros, uh, Courtney Nemec is also starting her preseason um, with the Portland Thorns FC. Uh, so she'll be out there too. Maybe we'll just maybe yeah, geez. hit them both yeah, up. I don't know, you know both of them. see how they're doing. So you know, it's, it's awesome to see like where uh, our LaSalle soccer players are going. You know, you well, got, then you also think of John McCarthy John on the Union, uh, goaltending there. I mean, mm -hmm. he's doing a pretty bang up job. The Union made it pretty far into the postseason last yeah. season. So and yeah, same with Joe Farrell too. Like, yeah, Joe Farrell too. I mean, <laughs> we, <laughs> what the heck? We, we have a pretty good success rate here at LaSalle for yeah. our, our soccer programs. I guess that, that maybe, is a testament to something. So. Maybe we could go pro. I don't know. Jake, I have a <laughs> knees, both knees yeah, problem both right knees there. But anyway, yeah. that just about wraps us up for this week. <laughs> if you can't make it out to see the marquee matchup, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com and by following us on Twitter at SportslineLTV. We post game updates and sneak peeks into the upcoming show. Also, check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV. We welcome you to send us your thoughts and suggestions about the show on either website. For Sarah and Jake and all the crew members here, Miss Anna Gomez and our entire Sportsline team, I'm Brendan Rigney. And I'm Jake from Degrassi. Thanks for joining and we will see you at the game. <laughs>